Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jane Gross, and this is our external speaker, Ian Mills, who will be speaking in a moment. So, the School of Nursing and Midwifery's uh, Sustainability Society and Health Research Group worked with our dental school uh, and was lucky enough to uh, get uh, an ISSR small collaborative grant to carry out a feasibility study in one dental practice in the north of Devon. The methods we used were based on a long-term evidence creation. The research started with um, a, a grant from the Centre for Sustainable Futures and we looked at the attitudes and opinions of health service managers towards climate change and sustainability. And we also looked at um, items bought by the NA NHS and identified items that should they no longer be available, they would have a great impact on patient experience and service delivery. This has led to creation of sustainability um, scenario teaching tools and um, a, a, um, an an e-tool which we're using in other trusts and we're going forward. We won a Green Gown Award for this um, research. Working with the dental school who'd also been working on sustainability through a rapid evidence review, the research team started to formulate questions that would be used as part of the feasibility study. We carried out a patient survey by going to a North, the North Devon show and asking um, members of the public what they thought about how they chose their dental practice and whether knowing that practice was sustainable would in fact influence their choice of practice. We also carried out a scoping, practice, a scoping exercise in the dental practice, qualitative interviews and a waste audit and Ian will talk about the data analysis. So the scoping exercise in the dental practice involved asking about where people, where they bought their um, equipment from, um, financial uh, information, the makeup of the practice, and uh, how they managed their waste. So procurement and waste was something we really did focus on. I then carried out qualitative interviews with a purposive sample of staff, asking them first about their own knowledge and attitudes towards climate change and sustainability, but also then about whether they felt there were opportunities within the practice to develop more sustainable practice, or indeed if sustainable pra practice was being considered and discussed within the practice at that time. We then carried out a waste audit, which involved um, on two occasions going in and measuring every single item that was produced from the treatment rooms. And um, we measured it by uh, literally measuring the, the, um, uh, the waste with a, a ruler, some of it, photographing it and weighing it. And then the aim of that was to try and develop um, financial cost and carbon savings to calculate how we might do that. <clears throat> Thank you, Jane. I'm going to give you a very brief and a very rapid overview of the, um, of the results. Um, primarily starting with the qualitative interviews. And the, the first area which was explored, or the theme that was explored, was around knowledge and attitudes towards climate change. And that was with a purpose of sample within our practice, uh, with 28 staff within our practice. Um, they, there was a wide range of views, uh, which pretty much reflected what you would see in, uh, in the general population. So going from people who weren't that bothered about climate change, it wasn't a major issue to them, to some that were much more passionate and felt, this is our planet, if we don't look after it, who's going to? Um, it explored um, the level of sustainability that was implemented at home. And again, uh, there was a wide range uh, from people who would maybe put their, change their bottles and their uh, plastic, put them in the right containers, to other people that were much more motivated. One of our staff um, had commented, we have a compost heap and recycled cardboard and all the usual things. All the usual things being in Torrington, North Devon, is having pigs, apparently. Um, and they are great at recycling, which I assume is eating waste rather than putting the right plastic bottles in the right <laughs> pot. Um, the practicalities of recycling was visited. And um, it was interesting to see, again, the disparate views or experiences that some felt um, it, was, it was just habit. It was just it was normal. That's what they did. They'd been brought up doing that. And others that felt it was a bit of a faff. 
Um, you know, it was a bit of an inconvenience. There was always different bins and, and different bits lying about. So they were obviously much less engaged. We looked at the opportunities and limitations for sustainability within the practice itself. And it was noticeable that a considerably lower priority was given to sustainability within the workplace than it was at home. Um, procurement uh, was another issue which was uh, explored and it was quite evident that the, the purchase of materials was based on the relationship with the supplier or the price predominantly rather than any consideration be given to environmental sustainability. Waste management, which Jane touched on, was an area which um, is very important within any clinical practice um, and particularly within dentistry uh, there have been significant changes in guidance uh, over the last four or five years. And um, sadly, from my point of view, there was obviously a degree of uncertainty and confusion within the practice about how we should deal with clinical waste, um, despite the fact that there's a considerable amount of training, education and information. Part of that might be due to the fact that we often um, source our training from waste disposal companies, which might seem naive in the extreme. And their mantra seems to be, if in doubt, chuck it out. So the, the staff were basically uh, operating in this climate of fear where there were concerns about the Care Quality Commission, um, the PCT or the area team, and the sanctions that might be apportioned if they threw clinical waste in the non-clinical bin. So again, if in doubt, chuck it out. And obviously that has repercussions on the amount uh, of clinical waste that we produce. Um, Sean and Rumby came to the practice um, and undertook uh, the, the job of looking through our bins. Um, and they identified that was 1,600 kilograms of clinical waste is produced in our practice. Um, the three most common items that were within the clinical waste were tissues, gloves and sterile wrapping. Um, that equates, using the carbon cost calculation tool, 34 kilograms of CO2 per year. Um, What's interesting is sterile wrapping being 11% of our clinical waste. Sterile wrapping is what it says on the tin, it's sterile. So it shouldn't be in clinical waste. But again, because it was within a clinical situation, the, the, the staff have been told it's at risk, so put it in the clinical waste. Uh, that's five kilograms per week, which might not seem a huge amount, but is the equivalent of 3.7 kilograms of, of CO2 per year and 633 pounds per annum. Now for a tight jock, that is quite a bit of money. <laughs> if we extrapolate that across the UK, we're looking at 2.32 million, um, which I guess is 75 nurses, 50 teachers, and probably two vice chancellors. So it is a significant... <laughs> <laughs> if we actually look at, look at it in terms of funding, that would be a nice pot of money for us to do the next stage of our research. Um, in terms of 13.7 metric tonnes, I guess, uh, you know, every little bit counts. Um, so although that might not be devastating in terms of a, a carbon cost reduction, it, I think it is quite important. So our conclu conclusions are that um, there's a limited priority is currently given to sustainability in dentistry. That's partly due to a lack of knowledge, a lack of awareness, and there are a few drivers to try and influence that, the, these changes. Um, the number of risks and the barriers that we identified were primarily around safety. Um, and other aspects around the hassle factor, can't be bothered, you don't have a buy-in uh, to it, the, the time it takes and the, the practical implications. On procurement, as I stated earlier, at present, certainly within our practice, and I'm sure we are fairly representative of most of the dental profession, uh, environmental sustainability is not taken into consideration. It's about price. Um, waste management. I think we demonstrated within our small study the introduction of fairly simple measures such as training and segregation of non-clinical and clinical can lead to a reduction in the clinical waste which will lead to lower carbon emissions and reduced costs. This is a, a, an ISSR small collaborative award uh, that funded this project and uh, allowed us to highlight potential opportunities of introduce, introducing environmental sustainability practice into dentistry. Um, also demonstrated that the, the carbon cost calculation tool that had been used previously uh, can be applied within a primary care setting. And we also hope that this is going to support a future application, um, perhaps to the NIHR, to extend this study on a national scale and involve more dental practices. 
But possibly most importantly, uh, from certainly my perspective, and I think uh, my, my, my co-researchers uh, would echo that, um, it's allowed us to establish links and collaboration uh, across a range of disciplines which we would not previously have done. And we're already talking about taking this forward and doing other research projects. So I'd certainly like to thank my co-researchers uh, and the ISSR for making this possible. So thank you very much.